So we um hi everyone. I think we do have some few minutes. Um, let's wait for others to join. Just a minute more. Thank you. Shafiq, I try promoting you to um the panelist is I don't know whether you receive a notification. Yeah, uh, so I think it's just about time. Um, good morning, everyone. And um, thank you very much for joining. Let me know whether I'm clear from the from your end. Um, Shafiq, is, it, is everything okay? Is the audio okay? Okay, okay. Um, so just by way of introduction and um, based on what we sent out, I just want to give you guys a high level of introduction today and probably we can pick from there um, moving on. So again, my name is Farouk Abdus Salam. I happen to be um, a recent graduate from Simon Fraser University in the Department of Economics. And um, I reached out to Shafiq quite recently. I think that was some few days ago about the um, this initiative that I started just um, this year, trying to see how best I can also um, help my fellow, uh, be it Ghanaian or non-Ghanaian student to apply based on their financial uh, position. So uh, I think it would be a good option for us to start giving high level introduction as to how to apply to graduate school and finally touch on what this assistant program is meant to do and probably what it's not meant to I mean, offer. So just by way of introduction, once again, I'm Farouk Abdus Salam, or you can just call me Farouk. And if you happen to have any doubt, um, you probably want to I mean, reach out to Shafiq. He might be another reasonable um, alternative in case you have any um, questions. So by off introduction, we will start by looking at the high level introduction, what's, what we, we might be looking at. Um, then I'll move on to why I think Canada might be a viable option for you based on the, um, your program and your um, interest. And then we'll move on to what you might want to look at in trying to prepare for this um, graduate program. And then how to select the schools, you probably want to be a bit more strategic as to how to go about it. And then um, for the statement of interest and in the CV, these are two key things that you need to, I mean, have pretty much polished in your um, application package. And then in terms of the payment, I'll have a look at how the payment goes, um, be it partial or full, and how to have a better way of, I mean, saving money. Um, then after you submit your application, what you probably want to have a look at, what to do, what not to do, how not to rush the people making the decision and what's not. And then um, I'll just give you guys a quick update as to what I've received so far from the applicant and um, how I intend to go with this uh, sharing of the budget, who might qualify, who I think might be on standby and um, how we can go about it. And lastly, we look at whether you guys have any questions. But before I go ahead with uh, the introduction and what's not, please feel free to, I mean, ask any questions along the way. If something is not really clear, if you think there is something missing, please uh, let me know. Um, first thing first, uh, let's ha have a look at it by way of background, probably what motivated me to start with this whole initiative. So when I was a graduate student, um, I had my profile on our SFU page and I 
tend to see a lot of students coming in, I mean, asking questions, uh, how do I apply to this program? I'm interested in economics. How do, what are the things that I probably have to look out for before I, I apply? Some of them come pretty much prepared. Hey, I'm done with my application package, but I think uh, my CV wouldn't be in a position that might, um, might be deemed I'll be reasonably polished. So can you have a look at my CV or my statements of interest? Some also come in and go like, hey, I really wanna apply, but I don't know whether they have scholarships and how can I survive financially? Some also get the admission. They come to me, ask me, hey, I'm done with the admission process. I've been admitted. The visa application is a bit I mean, tedious for me. How do I go about it? And again, um, with a visa, visa is a bit, I mean, it's quite a delicate issue. So you, you guys should be a, pretty much, I mean, assured that there is no other alternative. You don't have to pay for any visa um, connection or what's not. So I probably have to make this upfront. Don't have to make anything along those lines. So they come asking these questions along visa, how to guide them to apply for their visa. Some also get their visa, everything is done. Now they have to come to Canada. They don't know anyone to, I mean, call on to. When they arrive at the airport, how do I get someone to pick me at the airport? How do I get accommodation? So these are pretty much tough questions. And um, I think they are very uh, reasonable questions for someone to ask. And I've been receiving them a lot. So the thought has been, hey, how can I, together with my colleagues, bring out a program that might help students from the very first question as to the program to apply to the very, to the very last one, trying to settle in. So that has been the thought. And... We, I realized that there are a couple of things that we can do to help um, based on our experience here. The very first thing we can do here is, uh, I think the financial side of it, which I think I reached out to um, Shafiq primarily. Some of, some of you guys have everything that might be deemed to be a very good application, but maybe you, you wouldn't have the, the resources to I mean, pay for the application fee. Each application fee will cost you about $100 or more. And um, to get, to increase your chances, you probably have to apply to three or more schools. So we are looking at somewhere around four hundred dollars, which is around around two thousand Ghana CD. So this might be a bit uh, a bit too much for for students who is I mean often it's national service or something of that nature. So that's been the thought: how can we come in, or how can I come in to assist? with this. So that's been the primary, um, the primary focus. Now, the other side of it has been the issue of language test, GRE, transcript evaluation, and all that. So this has been another way of looking at the financial constraint, because you might have a look at, you might get a program that you truly think that you qualify, but they will ask you to bring a GRE. And before you write a GRE, you probably have to pay some money. And that's quite a lot too. So these are things that I probably, um, thought maybe there might be a better way to strategize on these financial options and how to advise you guys to apply and overcome this constraint in one way or the other. Now, what are the opportunities that I, I see um, in trying to put a special program together? The opportunities I see here is if we are able to come together, guide you from the very first question that you guys come asking to the very last one, there is high chance that you might get admitted into the, into the program. An example here is you can leverage on a past student's performance in a department before you apply. You go to the AWIP, an example here, let me quickly go to this page, which is basically mine, just to give you guys a high level um, meaning of what I'm trying to say here. So you go to a, a program or you go to a school, you're interested in a program, you don't know anyone there. First thing you might want to do is go check out the student page. Who is there? How can I leverage on the students um, available? So when you come to SFU and you go to economics, there are quite a, quite a few of us there. There is myself, there is Samuel Basua, there is um, um, Joe and the rest. So you come to the page, you look at um, who and what you might wanna or might, might wanna see there. So an example here is you go to the page, you see Farouk here, you go like, hey, Farouk is there. Maybe I might want reach to reach out to Farouk and tell Farouk, hey, I'm interested in applying to your program. Can you assist me uh, with the application package? Farouk might assist you based on your communication with Farouk. And you might also ask Farouk, hey, I might want to mention you within my statement of interest so that they get to know that um, I'm in touch with you and uh, maybe I might be a good student. I might give you the permission to do that. And when you do that, 
I can equally follow up with the professors and tell them that, hey, this person, I mean, contacted me. I think is a very good student. We are from the same university. I think you should uh, look at this application package. That will increase your chance. Now, if, if, if you don't do this and you apply blindly without necessarily getting to know who to find and where to find what, then um, you wouldn't be in a position compared to someone who did this. So that's an opportunity that I realized, and I think it will be good for us to see how best we can leverage upon these uh, opportunities. It's, it's basically increase your acceptance rate in one way or the other. And also in terms of the ease of settlement, you can contact Farouk, you can contact Samuel, you can contact Joe, you can contact individuals that might be in the program or probably contact me. I might know someone in another province that you are interested in um, visiting and that might be easier for you. So trying to bring out a program that will help everyone um, has, been the, has been the motivation. And basically that's what we are trying to do. And this is the first time there might be some loopholes here and there, there might be some mistakes along the way, but overall, I think um, this is what we have and this is what we are trying to um, accomplish. So I would like to pause here briefly. If you do have any question, please let me know. If there are no questions, I'm, I'm happy to move on to the next slide. Shafiq, I think you can um, use the mic. So if there are any questions, just let me know. Okay. I believe there are no questions as of now. Okay, good. Then we can move on to the next side of it, which is um, the aim of this program. What do we intend to achieve with this? Pro I think there's a question here. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Um, I will just refer to the chat then, Shafiq. I've seen your message. I'll refer to the chat. Thanks. Yeah. Now let's go to the, um, the objective of this program. So I, I realized that within the email that most of you sent, I think some of you were very clear as to um, the information that you receive. Yeah, that's a good question, um, Motawa Kale. I'll, I'll come back to that and uh, probably in the subsequent slide as to when and where to submit and deadline. Yeah, the timeline. Thanks, I'll do that. Yeah. Now, let me quickly have a look at the primary objective of this program, what I think this, this program is supposed to do and what it's not supposed to do. So what's this program supposed to do? First of all, we are interested in using this program to assist you with your school selection, assist you with the applica um, application review, as well as your CV and statement of interest review. So these are pretty much um, important things that you, you need within your application, and that's what we intend to do with it. Now, um, in terms of the application fee, we are interested or I'm interested in assisting with payment of the application, be it partial or full payment. So that's been the motivation, as I mentioned in the earlier slide. And other guide, just like I, I mentioned, trying to apply for the visa when you, have been, uh, when you have been admitted, how best can I come in to assist you, to guide you, um, submit a very good uh, visa application, just so you get yourself ahead of the ahead of the game we don't um the the secondary objective of this program is if for instance you identify a professor you identify a student and you are finding difficulty connecting with that person you can you can contact me or you can contact uh, my colleagues and we can try as much as possible to see how best we can get in touch with those students or those professors if we can just so they can be of help um, as I pointed out, the, the general secondary, the visa application and whatnot has been touched upon. Now, what this program wouldn't do is to tell you that, hey, I have a scholarship for you. So this is your scholarship. No, that's not what you're doing here. We are trying to guide you, motivate you, apply, assist you financially if we can. Then if you get the admission, good. If you don't, at least you've tried. You've tried your best. But we are not going to give you a scholarship and and go like hey this is a scholarship so just apply for visa no that's not how it's going to work so please if if, if you're here because you've heard about a scholarship and you so you thought this is what it's going to do um i'm sorry about that that's not what what we are going to do here okay so again depends on you how motivated are you are you interested in pursuing your graduate studies if you are interested in pursuing your graduate studies we are going to give you some guideline follow them if you follow them 
we believe you, you stand a higher chance. And when you, when you get the admission, then we can also come in to assist you with your visa. When you get a visa, then you can come in, pursue your dream within Canada. And if you want to stay, you stay. If you want to go back and help as well, you can go back and help. So that has been the dream. So everything depends on you. We are not going to get the scholarship for you right away. So that's one thing I want to point out. I see a couple of questions coming in. Let me quickly um, take a minute or two to address them. Yeah. No, so this program is not specifically related to economics. So when you look at the, um, the message that I sent out, it's pretty much broad. So, so far I've received about 300 applications and out of these 300 applications, I've categorized them into five, I mean, programs. So anyone that apply, any, anyone that sends me an email is for sure within this program. We try as much as possible to see how best we can advise you as to which program you might want to pursue. If you think economics is good for you, you go with economics. If you think psychology is good for you, you go with psychology. Trying to see which schools in terms of psychology might be a better fit for you. So it's not, it's not um, um, economic specific, open to all mostly, yeah. Now, Naziru asked a question. Um, with this, with emailing of the professors and if they don't apply, this is specific to a program. So some, some programs will ask you that you need to identify as professor first. Um, he or she has to agree that is willing to provide you prior to your um, application before you start. If you don't get that permission, then please don't do that. Don't, don't continue with your application. Other programs are pretty much open. You don't necessarily have to um, contact any professor. You just have to go ahead. But if you do that, you might want to contact a student just so the person might equally guide you should there be any issue that you have. So that's one thing I, you probably want to have a look at. I think I will look at it. Yeah. Yeah, so I think these are personal um, related questions. So we will have a look at them when, when we start with um, the nitty gritties of the classification as I pointed out. So I, I will group you guys into groups. You guys can bring personal questions. We can see how best we can contact um, individuals or colleagues from the other schools and how they can be of help. Yeah, so that will be to Mohammed's question. Yeah, so... Yeah, so we come back to this question. I think that's a very interesting question. We'll come back to it and have a look at it in terms of um, having two professors and willing to um, assist you. Okay, so I'll come back to the questions here. If there are any specific questions related to um, what I pointed out about the initiative, please feel free. I'm going through the questions to see those related to um, the initiative. I think the questions that I've seen so far are pretty much related to the one that I've seen down there. So I'll come back and look at, look at your questions. Okay. So let's go back to um, the, next, uh, the next slide. Why I think Canada might be a good option. Um, basically, the reason why I, I kind of like Canada is the fact that it's a very large country with pretty much less populated, um, I mean, people. So uh, the population is, is around 40, 000, 40 million at most, and then the, um, the size is pretty much vast. So there is a tendency, or they like more people to come in. They are very welcoming, very warm people. You love it being here. You feel, I mean, you feel welcomed. So Canada, in terms of in terms of its um its policy, I think is the best place to 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 study as a graduate student. Now, in terms of the number of school, number of schools um to search for, I think there are quite a lot of them here. So that's another advantage when when you try to look out for schools within Canada. At least you can find two or three top universities in each um, province, and you can equally find additional universities um, within the same province. So that's another way of looking at it. Now, in terms of um, the fees, as in how much you need to pay before, before you enroll in the program, it is very, very flexible to some extent. Um, some of the provinces like British Columbia, for instance, the, the fees are very, very low. Manitoba, for instance, I think it's very low because I was there for a year. Saskatoon might be the same. Um, within Ontario, it might be a bit exorbitant, but again, the scholarship that they offer might, might um, compensate for that. So generally the fees, is, the fees to situation is not really dire. 
you might even you might equally come in and um, might not be in a position to pay everything up front. They have an installment payment plan for you. You can pay an installment. Even if you, you, you wouldn't be in a position to pay everything um, in installment, they have other programs like Bergeries that might equally come in and help you. So when you, when you are trying to apply to, to a school within Canada, I personally think that you shouldn't be looking so much into the, um, the cost of the program, unless, of course, a professional course. When it's a professional course, then you probably want to have a look at it. But if it is a more general program like economics, psychology, the sciences, then um, I think you shouldn't worry much. In terms of the funding, so um, one thing I, I occasionally come across is, or I mostly come across, I should say, is um, individuals come to me and go like, hey, do they have scholarships? I think that's the wrong question to ask. We don't, you don't, you don't have to ask that question as to whether they have scholarships or not, because scholarship, from my understanding of the um, of the one asking the questions, is that is there something that they would just give you right away, and you just come start your program, and at the end of the at the end of the day you are done, and that's the end of it? No, that's not how it works. So you probably want to, I mean, strategize in terms of financial support that come your way or the funding sources. First, first thing first, the very first question you ask yourself is, do they have scholarships? And what is a scholarship? Scholarships are basically what they give you without any conditions attached. So that's a scholarship, no issue about that. They also have other sources of funding, which are equally called scholarships, like the teaching assistant or research assistant. So this is where you come in, you teach, they pay you, and you use that money to pay your fees. So that's another way of looking at the scholarship. Okay, so not only the unconditional I mean, payment, there is another way of looking at it, which is the, um, the work-related scholarship, which is the teaching assistantship or the research assistantship. You equally have um, an opportunity to work within Canada for 20 hours in a week. So within every week, you have a maximum 20 hours a week to work. So if you are concerned about funding, this is another source of funding for you. You can equally work and get yourself in shape. There is other ways of getting um, funding, which is bursary that I mentioned earlier. Bursary, I think most people don't know about it. This is when you come in, you probably have, might have a very good financial standing before coming in, but you came in, something hits really hard and you don't have the financial support anymore. Here, you can apply for bursary. And bursary are basically giving you the money to assist you with your payment. So you have to look at the... Um, um, Joseph, Joshua, I'll come, back, I'll, I'll come to, your, to you... Um, pretty shortly. Let me just finish with this and um, come to you. So bursaries are there to support as well. Then there's also spousal support. So if you are married and you are coming to Canada, you can come on a student visa, but at the same time, you can apply for what we call an open work um, permit or open work visa, where your spouse will come with you and she's allowed to work as many hours as she wants. So she, he or she will be working to assist you whilst you, you will be in the, um, in the program studying. So that's another source of funding. So if you are interested in funding or if you want to ask a question related to funding, do not say, do they have scholarships? No, the best approach is what are the sources of funding and how can I leverage on them? So that's one thing I wanted to point out. So within why I think Canada is a very good place for you to um, apply for graduate um, studies is the immigration policy. So when you come in and you, you, you study for one year, they will give you an additional year for you to stay for free where you, you are allowed to work. So they will give you an open work permit. You work as many hours as you want just so you get, I mean, experience. You have a minimum of one, one year or a maximum of three years to work. So it's not see when you are done, they will just start sacking you, leave the country. No, that's not how, it's, how it works here. Very, very flexible. So that's one thing you probably want to consider was um, when trying to apply to, to, a, to a country. And here, Canada is giving us something that's more, more flexible. Now, again, when you come in and you, you, you perform really well, you do have a chance of continuing with your, with your PhD, which I did. And I think I do advise most of you to be thinking along those lines as well. Then again, when you are done, when you when you do have, when they give you the one year to work and you are done with the one year or within the course of the one year, there are other immigration policies here. You can apply to what we call the PR or citizenship. 
So that's another avenue that you might want to explore. So generally, you do have the peace of mind being in the country as a student. You do have a peace of mind being in the country after being a student, which is when you, when you are done with, with your school. And you do have a peace of mind thereafter as well. Everything is pretty much um, solid. So um, let me quickly go to Joshua's question. I think um, you raised your hand. Let me see, uh -oh. Joshua, do you, let me see what I can give you access to. Is it Joshua then? Can you use the mic? Oh, let me see whether you can use the mic. Just give me a second. Um, Joshua, please, um, I was wondering whether you can use the mic and how best I can come in to answer your question. Okay, so I see questions related to the, um, okay. So just if you can text it, I think that would be a very good op I mean, option. Yeah. And uh, let me see, Joshua, let me see whether I can allow you to talk. I'm trying to find you here. And I think um, the charts are coming in. I'll try as much as possible to see whether I can pick them up. But for now, I'm trying to go to Joshua and see. Yeah. Joshua, can you can you talk now? Hi, Joshua. Hi, Joshua. Okay. There was a hand raised, so I thought there was something urgent. So if there is nothing urgent, I think that's fine. We can continue with it. I see questions coming in. So I think um there were related questions. Um, with regards to the three-year program. Okay, okay. Oh, wow, these are very good questions. Uh, just give me a second to see how best I can sample them and answer them accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Shafiq, you, I think um, you can equally use the mic now. Just draw my attention if there's something that I might um, miss. Yeah. Trying to sample the questions here. Um, so how about this? Um, let me complete the slide, then come back to the questions. Trying to, I mean, search for the questions is, is pretty much dragging us behind. So just leave your questions in the chat. When I'm done, I'll just try and sample them. But if there's something urgent and you are interested in using the mic, uh, please let me know. I'll just come in and uh, give you the mic. Is there anyone with any uh, specific question via the mic? If not, please leave everything in the chat. Good, thank you. So let's go ahead with the presentation in terms of what we think um, might be viable. So with, with a program, um, with a teaching assistantship or research assistantship, it doesn't really matter whether you are a master's student or a PhD student, it's mostly open. They mostly open it to um, most, um, most MAs as well as most PhDs, per my experience, I think, yeah. And again, um, with the one to three year um, work, uh, work opportunity is not really related to any course, provided you have a one year um, graduate program, you can come in and quickly, you can come in and get that. So that's not an issue as well. So if there are no questions related to uh, using the mic, I'll just go ahead with the preparation as to what I think might be uh, one or two things to consider whilst, um, whilst preparing. Now, the very first question you probably want to ask yourself is which program am I interested in applying to or the course that I'm interested in applying to? The second thing you might want to consider is what's my strength? And your strength here is basically what's your GPA or what's your class? Is the first class? Is the second class upper? How strong is the upper? These are questions that you might want to ask yourself. The year you completed. I think this is a very important um point that we, we need to, I mean, emphasize on. When you're a recent graduate, the opportunity is that you, you get your application quickly reviewed or you get a higher chance is 
is high compared to someone who is done with school and maybe might have sat um, at home for about uh, maybe five years, it will be tough for that person. But if you just completed school and you, you are trying to apply, then you stand, a, you stand a better chance. Having said that, I think if you, you completed your school uh, five years ago, it shouldn't, it shouldn't I mean, put you off. What I suggest you do here is you put within, you, you prepare a very good application package where you tend to mention what you've been doing for the five years and how relevant um, that experience will be in that graduate program. That might equally give you a chance. So I think the year of completion is equally important. Now the references, get to see, hey, who am I going to call upon to um, referee this application? Who is going to be my referee, right? So these are questions you probably want to, want to ask yourself. Then flexibility of the program or the program change. I think this is equally important. Here, people come in going like, hey, I have, um, I have a degree in electrical engineering or I have a degree in um, maybe any, 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 any calls at all. But before I apply to a program related to electrical engineering, they are asking me to identify a supervisor and it has been extremely difficult and I've not been able to find any. Now, the question here is, will you sit home and do nothing about it or would you strategize? And this is where you probably want to ask yourself how to strategize. If, for instance, you did civil engineering, there isn't any supervisor um, willing to supervise you or accept you before you start a program, you might want to quickly think about, hey, what other programs might be related to this civil engineering that I might want to use my expertise on? Hey, there might be a course related to urban planning. Go check urban planning. Do they need any, any supervisor? No, okay, I just go ahead and apply to urban planning just so I get myself, I mean, uh, uh, the footing in there. When I come to Canada, I'm done with urban planning and I still want to pursue my related degree. I now know the system and I can go ahead and apply to my specialty, specialty what I really wanted to do, but I was prevented in the first place. Just like most of us, we come from business school, we come from, um, what's the name, high, high school. We really want to do um, admin. But the school will go like, no, we're not going to give you admin. We're going to give you econ stats. We get very mad at them in the beginning. By the end of the day, we end, we, we end up liking it. So these are things that you might want to ask yourself. How quickly can you transition? How, can, how, how is your degree applicable to other fields? And how can you use that applicability to apply to other programs? So these are the questions that you might want to see or you might want to strategize about. Now, in terms of the school choice, I think this is a very, I mean, delicate question. Most of you might want to go, hey, I want to go to UBC, SFU, the top universities, the top programs. I think you might want to think twice about this, especially when you are coming in for an MA program or probably a PhD program for that matter. The top universities might sound good, but they have limited spaces because you are competing with other people around the world, other people around the world. So in terms of your chances, it's somewhat limited. Secondly, they do have a very stressful program, right? So some of the things that they teach are pretty much high level. You might get a first class or whatever in Legon, but when you come and see what they, what they do there, I think uh, you'll be shocked. So you don't want to find yourself in that situation. You want to go, go in and get go like, wow, what am I doing here? So that's going to be a, hard, a very hard landing for you. Uh, you end up messing your, 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 your grade points. You, em, you end up not being able to pursue your, your, your PhD as you, you want to do. So if you are coming in as an MA, I will encourage you to apply to the top schools that you want to do based on your strength. You want to apply to based on your strength. I will really encourage you to do that. But at the same time, I would like, to, I would like you to think about applying to medium or not so um, top ranked school. When you do that, when you apply to a medium round school and you come in, the shock is not that massive. Even though um, the program might be difficult, the shock, it wouldn't be that massive compared to a top school. You'll be, it will be a bit, more, um, a bit more doable for you. The acceptance rate in the first place is also going to be extremely flexible because you come in, um, not so many um, people apply to it. So it's a, bit, um, it's, it's a bit more flexible. So you have a higher chance of coming in. Then, given that um, your, the fact that you settled well, the, the fact that you performed well, will give you a higher chance to apply to a PhD program because you have grace within Canada to show for it. 
right? So these are things that you probably want to consider when you apply to schools within Canada. So the those having the first class, I think you might want to look at it twice, okay? At least have some top schools and have some medium round schools in there too. Um, and just be basically um, flexible. In terms of the future goals, um, you probably want to see what are my goals, what am I expected to do, and how that re relates to the, um, to the field. Now, in terms of the number of schools to apply, I think if you have the money or the resources, I think you should apply to as many schools as you can. But if you don't, um, it's fine. But I, I, I kind of... Um, advise that you should apply to as many schools as possible. What this does is it's increased your chances of getting in the first place. If you happen to be extremely lucky and you get two offers, it increases your chances of getting a visa. And how does that work? If you have two offers, one is offering you 20,000, the other one is offering you 50,000. If you're applying to a, um, for the visa, if you give the 20,000 as your main school, you might, you might um, get rejected because your funding is, isn't enough. But when you show the 50,000 letter, they were like, wow, you have, you have enough funding to show for it. So that's going to increase the chances of getting a visa. Another way of looking at it is if you have an increased, um, what should I call it? If you have two offers, two competing offers, the very first school is giving you 20,000, the second school is giving you um, 50,000, and you really want to go to the first school, you go like, hey, I really want to come to you guys. You guys are giving me 20,000 but the other school is giving me 50,000. Do you guys want to match them? If you match them, I'll come to you. If you're not willing to match them, I, then I'm just leaving you guys. If they really want you, they will give you an increased offer as well. So you stand a chance of getting more by applying to more schools and being more flexible in that regard. So I think um, I would like to pause here. If there are any questions, please let me know. But I think, um, was it Sadat um, raised um, his hand? Let me know whether you still want to use the mic. If you want to use the mic, please let me know. Yeah, so that you can use the mic now. Can you um can you assess the mic, Sadat? Trying to see whether I can um Sadat, let me see whether you want to use the mic. And um, I'll give you the permission to do so. Okay, I think we have to. I want to pause, get to see. Um, yeah, allowed to talk. So that can you can you use the mic? I think you you can use the mic now. Feel free. So that's Adam. Let me know if there is any issue using the mic. I've granted you guys the permission to use the mic, um, but it seems like it's still uh, mute. Anyone in there to assist me? Let me give... Um, trying to see. Uh, I'm going to give a few of you. I'm just testing now. I think there is Yakub Larry Barry. Um, if you can use the mic, let me know whether it works. If it doesn't, um, I probably have to check it again. I've granted... Um, Yakub, Larry, Barry, the permission can can it's you use the mic? Here. Good. Yeah, it's working here. Good. Then um, I probably might want to assume that Sadat is not willing to talk anymore, and we might want to move away to other participants, those who have their hands raised. Um, yeah. Okay. So um, yeah. If you have any questions and you want to use the mic, please raise your hand. I'll try and see whether I can grant you guys the permission to do so. Yeah. Well, we probably want to just finish everything, then grant everyone the permission to use the mic, see how messy it becomes, then we can move away from that too. So that's the, um, that's the second part in terms of trying to prepare. Now let's go ahead and then see what um, might be the choice that you probably want to make. So you, you're done with everything that we spoke about. We are now interested in getting to know um, which school we, we want to apply to and um, how best we can prepare a package. Now, the very first thing you might want to see, we might want to do here is you want to research on some shortlisted schools, okay? If you're done with the research, 
check the application deadline. This is this is crucial and it's mostly non-negotiable. If the application is deadline is November 15th, it's going to be November 15th. No one is going to is going to change it for you. And um, I think most applications will start closing either ending November or mid um, December. Some go up until January and some up, up until February, but it's somewhat um, rare. So please um, keep your keep an eye on that. Check the application fee. How much are they charging for you to um, join the program? If, for instance, the application fee is um, $100, I think that's fairly reasonable. If the application fee is not um, $100, then you might want to see, hey, if this this is this too much, is this something that I can um, I can pay, or how best can I um, contact someone to assist me in that regard? So that's another another way of looking at it in terms of the application fee. Um, in terms of the um, specific departmental requirements, check whether they need a GRU or GMAT. So if you have a specific budget, say I would like to apply to three schools and I have three hundred dollars and you go in there and they're asking you to present a GRE or GMAT, that means you're going to take out of your $300, at least a minimum of $200 to write a GRE. So you're only left with $100 to apply to the same school. So you're only left with, you are just done with only one application and that's the end of it. So that's, that will be another consideration that you probably wanna have in mind. Um, are you really willing to write a GRE? And do you have the means to do that? So that's another consideration that I mentioned, um, I mentioned earlier. Now, in terms of the TOEFL or the English proficiency, I strongly encourage you guys not to write this or discourage you not to write this. Um, basically, when they, write, they ask for English proficiency, you can request for a waiver. And a waiver is basically a, a letter from the University of Ghana indicating that all your courses were um, University of Ghana, UCC, UDS, and Tech, indicating that all your co courses were um, taught in English and you are a uh, English speaking country. And in that, in that case, you don't have to write any TOEFL or any English requirement. But for GRE and GMAT, I think some of them are pretty much uh, firm on that. So just keep an eye on that. And depends on um, pro it's program specific as well. Now, some of them do require you to get a supervisor before you apply. Please check this requirement. If they do, then get a supervisor. If you don't get a supervisor, don't go waste your money use it to apply to another program okay so that's another um another strong point that i would like to raise here now in terms of the transcript and um certificate evaluation some schools will require you to evaluate your transcript or you to evaluate your your certificate this again i think is a waste of money if you don't and it's, it's quite costly because you need wes to do that and they will charge you a minimum of 300 dollars to do that and i don't think you have the money to do that so if they're asking you to um evaluate your transcript or evaluate your certificate i probably might want to advise you to either i mean get in touch with them try to under, i mean explain yourself out if you are not uh, flexible you might want to move away because it might be a bit too expensive if you don't have the money. If you have the money and you are willing to do that, um, please feel free to do so. Now, in terms of the, um, the semesters and immigration, so when you come to a program and you do one year program, you most often than not get one year immigration um, post your program. So you have one year to work. If you do one and a half years or two years and more, then you have three years to work. So this is one consideration that you probably want to have in mind as well. So one year, you get one additional year to work. You work for you, you, you study for two years or three years, you get um, three years to work. So you have like four, um, four or five years to yourself. So if you come in for one year visa and you finish your program in one year, you have additional one year. So you have two years to stay in Canada. But that's not the end of it. You still have other immigration policies like the PR, citizenship, and the rest to do so. So just this is somewhat flexible. It shouldn't be a deal breaker for you. Search for students that you think might be um, connected to you in one way or the other. As I mentioned earlier, you can go to the student page, search for the student. And at SFU, you can see the likes of Samuel, Dennis, um, Richmond. These are people that you can easily connect to. John, you can connect to them. UBC, you can see the likes of Jonathan and the rest. You go to Manitoba, you can see the likes of Razak. You go to Saskatchewan, you can see the likes of um, Latif. So we are like 
you go to, um, I think, Ontario, you see the likes of Fauzia. There are quite a lot of us spread all over Canada. And, it's, and we have a very good um, connection system. So if you have any difficulty, there's a specific person in, 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 a, in a province, but you know someone in another province, you're having a difficulty contacting that person, please reach out to someone you know. The person might, equal, might easily get in touch with, with him for you. So just make sure you, you know that is a viable option here. And we, we are here to help in that regard. In terms of the funding options, as I pointed out, there are a lot of funding options for you as a graduate um, student. So I want to pause, I mean, pause here. There are questions that came in. Um, yeah. So if someone wants to use the mic as well, please um, let me know. I think I'm putting all the questions. I mean, tallying them um, and placing them for the final um, for the final slide. Now, this is where I think most of us have issues with. So you are done. You are done with school. School provides you with a transcript. The school provides you with a CV. You, you tell you tell them you tell you tell everyone that you are a first class student. Then they ask you to write a statement of interest. What is a statement of interest in the first place? How do you write it? Do you go around asking people, hey, write this for me? These are things that you probably want to consider and have a very solid statement of interest. Don't ask anyone to write a statement of interest for you. Have your own story. Have your own um, sample. Write it down. Edit it severally. Don't write a fair sample and then give it out to someone to go like, hey, can you, can you check this thing for me? No, don't do that. Write it at least three or four times. Give it to your very immediate colleague to check it. Check it over like three or four times. Then you can contact someone abroad and go like, hey, I'd like to apply to your program. This is my statement of interest. Do you mind having a look at it briefly? If, it's, if it is well polished and the person reads it, the person will be more willing to help you. But if it is all over the place and you would like to seek for favor for the second time, then it's going to be a very difficult, uh, I mean, tax for the, for the person. So please, for the statement of interest, keep it as polished as possible before you even give it out to someone to, um, to review for you. Now, what is the statement of interest in the first place? Basically, this is a chronicle of your story or your journey. Who are you? How special are you? How different are you from the, uh, from the other applicant? Tell a story about yourself. Tell them how unique you are. So that's what I would like to point out here for the first point. Now, within your story, you might want to indicate your strength, like what makes you special for the program? Hey, this is a psychology program, and I've, I've, I've been able to work with a lot of people, and I know more about psychology. This is my strength, and this is what I can provide. Good. Put it in the statement of interest and show them that you are someone who is a very strong candidate. Hey, this is a, an economics-related program, and they need a lot of math for someone to survive. You have math background, you have all the, um, the, special program, um, the special skills in math or special programs that's related to math. You just write a statement of interest, highlighting this, this, this strength and making sure that they get to see that you are, very, you are someone that they can trust with their money. And when you come in, you're gonna do a good job. So this is what you probably wanna consider. Now, Another aspect of a statement of interest, and that's one thing that I personally have, have found to be extremely useful, and I'll encourage most of the applicants here to do because most of the applications that came in were mostly either just about the first class. You see someone getting 69.9. I was like, why not give him the first class and make it 70? You see someone getting 3.57, 3.59. Like, this is just a first class, but your certificate will show that you are a second class upper. Now, within, the, within your statement of interest, this is where you might want to stand out. Tell them that, hey, even though my certificate shows that I'm a second class upper student, it doesn't tell the whole story. It is due to this, 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 that. So I'd like to give you guys a personal story here as to how I, I kind of formulated my statement of interest. So I mentioned out that as a business student coming from high school, you come to Legon. They give you a different program, you can't start, you, you somewhat confused, not so motivated to take it. You just, you just take it as, as a test. And um, for the first few years, you might find yourself less motivated. So your performance might be very, very, I mean, very down. You know, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be in a position to, I mean, get the, even the upper. It will be a lower for the first year or the first, um, the first two years. 
But if something clicks and you go like, hey, these are the causes that I'm taking in economics. I think these are causes that are very, very useful. I'm now motivated. I'm going to set up and complete my second, third, fourth year on, a, on the high. And you're able to show that. And you get a first class or second class upper. Then you can tell them within the statement of interest. Hey, even though I did have a couple of setbacks with this low, low grades in my first year due to this, this, this reason, I was able to pick myself up, get myself very motivated and finish with a very strong upper. So when you look at my grade point for the final two years, you realize that I had a minimum of maybe 3.8 or minimum of 3.9, which shows that I'm a first class student. When you tell them a story of this nature, they will be more willing to buy into you because graduate, graduate um, school is not smooth sailing. It has its highs and downs. So when someone is coming in who has shown that, who has shown that resilience, that initially he was a bad student because something happened and he was able to overturn it and becomes, he, he finally becomes a good student, then he's, he's someone we can trust that regardless of the courses that he's going to take here, regardless of the, the grades that he's going to take here, he's still going to remain motivated and he can turn himself around if he is to find any issue along the way. So that's how you might want to sell yourself, okay? Sell yourself that, hey, even though I'm, a, an, I'm an upper student, I think um, I'm more motivated. I'm someone who can turn, can, can turn things around pretty much fast. So that's what I would like to point out here in terms of your statement of interest. It could be the converse. You start on a very high note, but your final year, you had a very poor grade due to maybe a personal circumstance or family reason. You can mention this out and they can uh, sympathize with you in that regard as well. You might wanna, in terms of your statement of interest as well, mention why you are choosing the, the program and what if, and the school as well, and why you, um, what is gonna fit into, what you think might fit into your future objective in terms of your selection of the program and in the school. So that's one thing you probably want to um, mention within your statement of interest. Again, you can identify a couple of courses of professors, mention them briefly. If they don't need any professor to, I mean, I mean, supervise you, mention them briefly, go like this course, uh, this, this course, I'm, pretty, I'm very interested in it. This is what I think might be of, of great importance to me. Give me the option, give me the opportunity and I'm not going to disappoint you. You might want to identify, um, student to reference, as I pointed out earlier. So if, for instance, you come to SFU, you form a rapport with me, or you form a rapport with John, or you form a rapport with um, Samuel, and Samuel is, I mean, able to pick up your highs and lows, and Samuel is very confident about you as, as a student, then you might want to I mean, seek someone or seek my permission, go like, hey, I'd like to mention you in my statement of interest, that I've been in touch with you, you've been a mentor, you are someone that um, has encouraged me to apply to this program based on my strength. I'd like to mention you in my, in my, in my statement. If, you, if, if I give you the permission and you mention, I think you do stand a chance because the professors might equally come to me. It might be a professor who happens to be my supervisor goes through the statement and goes like, hey, this guy mentioned you. Do you know him? I go, okay, yeah, I know, I know him. He's someone I know. And then uh, I think you guys should give him a chance if, if need be. These are things that you can play around with. So this last option here, I don't see people doing that. I myself didn't do that, but I think we can leverage on that. So that's something that I would like to call out. If there's someone willing to, to use the mic in terms of the questions, if there's something pressing, please let me know. I think I can give you the chance to, um, but so far, yeah, good. So that's what I have here in terms of your statement of interest. So this is high level, what you need to put in your statement. So given that you guys are graduate students, I will encourage you to try writing it on your own for, for, the, for the start, review it several times, give it to your friends before finally giving it to someone who is a bit high for the person to um, see what's going on. And this might be a good template for you to rely on based on your personal story. If you are someone who had A's throughout, I think that's, a, that's a equally a fantastic story. You can tell them that story as well. Now, in terms of your CV, I think I've come across some CVs. Some of them are in a very good shape, but others are not in so good a shape, I should say. But uh, again, we are in the initial stage. Um, we can um, better polish our CV, high level in trying to write your CV, get your education first, because that's one thing they are interested in getting to see. 
avoid writing those initial profile about yourself and someone is motivated to do this, a, a paragraph. No, I think you can shift all those into your statement of interest. They can get to see that. Don't repeat information here and there. If you have information on your CV and it's, um, what's the name, statement of interest, and there's more to show, then you are wasting the page. So please take, take away those long statements in the beginning about yourself or introduction and just start with something pretty much um, crisp, education, your skills, how those skills are relevant. You don't go mentioning your mention, you don't go mentioning your hobby, I know how to cook, and leave away a skill like I know how to use an R or R or maybe Stata or maybe um, Python. You don't do that. So you start by looking at the skills first, right? So how relevant those skills will be to the program. Make sure you highlight those skills as well. You can equally mention projects that you work on and how um, versatile you are with project management and research ideas as well. You can mention the awards that you, you've received in the past if you have any. Volunteering is very, very important. I think Canada is a very more, is, is somewhat, um, I shouldn't say somewhat. I think Canada gives a lot of emphasis on volunteering. It shows your, the humanity part of you, right? The humanitarian aspect of you, how you are willing to help others. So if you are someone who volunteers a lot, you might wanna highlight that um, as well. If you had other program specific qualities, just like what I mentioned, um, please um, make sure you do that. And again, um, stop all these um, long um, introduction. I think it will take much of your space on your CV. Some personal details like religion, I don't think might be important putting on, on your CV. I might be wrong, but I think issues like gender might equally matter because at the end of the day, they might be looking for gender balance and being a female might, be, might give you an upper hand in a specific program compared to another program. So maybe gender might be something that might be equally, uh, I mean, it might be allowable, but I don't know for sure. So that's one thing you probably want to um, have in mind. There are other templates to use. What I see is most of you use Word document to write your CV, and you end up leaving it in Word without converting into PDF. This is, this, is not, this is not good because at the end of the day, when I open the doc, the formatting might change. If you, have, if you don't have a very good format and you present a doc, Word doc, it's just going to change as soon as I open the doc. But if you present a PDF, it's much easier. It's still consistent, nothing changes. So um, there is this um, option for you guys to try. I'm trying to put the link here. When you click on it and you go to, um, you go to Overleaf, this is what we call LaTeX. You get to see the type of CVs and they will give you a template for you to try. So you open this template, you can open the template, you can try working around with this and um, this is basically overleave and how to leverage on, on, on these um, tools to write a very good CV. So please um, have this in mind as you try to apply to these programs. Now, um, let's see what we have here in terms of the next slide. So just give me a second. Yes, yeah, so that's by way of CV. Now, in terms of the payment, you need a MasterCard to do the payment. And here as well, what I realized here is the payment um, for the transaction fee might be just too high. So if you know someone abroad, the person can equally pay on your behalf, then um, find someone to send the mobile money to. Just find a, I mean, um, I mean, we all remit money home. If someone is willing to remit money home and um, the person is, you, you, you also want to get some payments done here for you, the person can do the, you can do the remittance for, for the person back home and he or she can do the payments here. Just a very fair transaction. Avoid those high, high um, bank charges. That's my advice here. Um, in terms of the referees, when you are done pay, paying your, your fees, some of the schools will give you the options to upload your documents. If you don't pay, you might not be able to upload your document. So when you, as soon as you are done, then you can upload your document. Then your, ref, um, your, your referees will get a link indicating that, hey, this guy is applying to this school. Could you please have a look at it and give him the reference and all that. By trying to get a referee, just make sure you select the best ones. Just, just don't go pick any professor who will give you a shoddy um, reference because you are competing amongst, among, I mean, a lot of people. So please um, have a look at that. Make sure your, your referee knows you very well. It's someone that you got an A in his course and is willing to, is willing to give you a very good reference. 
Um, in terms of the document that you are about to um, submit, make sure they are mostly in PDF. Again, avoid using Word because the format might change and it might be messy. You can submit as soon as you're done with the submission, just make sure that the um, confirmation is there. You receive a confirmation indicating that you've sent the CV out. And you should send a sealed transcript and certificate to the school. So here you go to University of Ghana, which um, I happen to know a bit. So you go there, you go to the academic, reg um, the registrar's office, they give you all the tr stamped transcript. You just send it to the school using the address provided. So that's that'll be the end of your application process. Now, at the end of the application process, what you have to do is check the standard decision time. When do you expect to hear from them? I wouldn't advise you to rush in making that decision as in terms of the follow-up because they have two windows. They have the first badge and they have the second badge. It might be the case that you didn't qualify for the first badge, but some of some individuals within the first badge might have um, dropped or they declined the offer, then they'll call on you. But if you rush and you, you keep on, I mean, Asking, asking them, hey, what's my application status? What's my application status? If it's too I mean, persistent, uh, or, or yeah, if it's too persistent, then they probably might want to say, hey, <laughs> no. So just be a bit more flexible on that. You can follow up with the secretaries. I think they are more uh, re uh, receptive. Please do that. You can follow up with them. You can also check with the, with the students in the department. who are like, hey, I applied to your school, but I think I'm not hearing anything from them. The person can just go to the graduate chair and go like, hey, when, when do you guys expect to make the decisions? And you can, he can come back and tell you, hey, I think they are still looking at it or maybe they are done or maybe this is what's going on. You can do that. And if you get accepted, then I would totally, I mean, advise you to start preparing your visa application right away. You don't have to delay. If you delay, then there's going to be an issue. Um, use your letter, apply for the visa, see whether you are going to apply for in-person or online. These are options. See whether you are going to give a medical report upfront. I think these are things that we can capture probably later. Due to time, I, I wouldn't be in a position to um, go so much deeper into them. And um, have a look at the slide which I'll be posting and feel free to ask your questions. I think there are a lot of questions in here. I'll try as much as possible to answer them. Then in terms of the program that we are trying to um, provide you guys. Um, so far, I've received about 300 applications. I've categorized you guys into five categories. The business-related students. These are students who have accounting, human resource, commerce, and the rest. And I have the pure sciences. These are guys in chemistry, physics, engineering, and other um, related science programs. And I have the arts one. These are the psychology and the sociology students. I have the arts two, which, which is the mass oriented ones, which is the um, economic statistics and the rest. And then the, I have the other um, fields that I wasn't, I mean, really able to narrow them down. So development studies, I think most of them were coming from UDS as well as tech, nursing, and some master's um, students who also want, want to continue with their PhD. So these are five categories. So if, if I'm going to make a decision out, please just get to see where you fall here. So I'm going to send an SL sheet get to see where you fall in terms of this breakout. The next um, option, the next idea here is to get a colleague of mine who might be in business. And the person will organize a quick I mean, Zoom meeting with all the um, applicants in this, in this section. Then I'll find someone in chemistry. I think I've, I've, I've found one already who is in chem, um, who is, um, I think he's a professor at York who might be equally willing to talk to you guys and advise you accordingly based on his expertise. I wouldn't be in a position to advise a scientist. I'm just an economist as of now. And the um, economics and statistics, myself, and the likes of um, Jonathan, I think we can all organize a quick meeting with you guys and show you guys what your application package will be in trying to be a bit more specific with the um, statistic requirements or the economics requirements. The development, I think um, I found Paul, Paul is willing to talk to you guys. I'll organize a quick meeting. I mean, put you guys in that uh, meeting, get to see how he can advise you as you guys prepare your package. So these are the five categories. Now, in terms of the money, um, initially it was five people. Actually, it was two. Then uh, I, I was like, okay, let me try and sponsor two people. And I contacted Shafiq and Shafiq was like, okay, that's a very good idea. That's very generous. And then I was like, okay, let's make it five. 
then five was what we agreed upon. But when the, um, the notice came out, I think I received almost 300 students. And out of 300 students, taking five wouldn't be a fair, um, wouldn't be a fair um, starting point. So for now, I'm going to increase the budget to 1,500. That is to say, I'm going to give each category here. So if you fall within business, I'm going to assign a budget of $300 to your team. If you fall within um, pure sciences, I'm going to um, um, allocate $300 um, to your team and the rest of the team as well, $300 each. Now, we already have a fair idea of what our top applicants are. So you get to know your status as to whether you are a top applicant. And you being a top applicant doesn't mean you are special than anyone. We just think that you stand a higher chance and probably your, your knee status might be a bit more um, delicate compared to others. So we assign those status. Then we ask everyone to go prepare a package within two weeks go through everything that we discussed, get to see whether you, whether you have the CV ready, statement change ready, whether you need a supervisor or not, whether you have a school that you identified, whether you have a Ghanaian student who, who is there, whether we, you need any additional support, make sure you answer all those questions. If you're able to answer all those questions and they are complete, then you come back to us, hey, hey I'm done, I'm part of the top student, I think I'm ready to submit my application. Then we come in, we do a quick review, you submit and we do the payment for you right away. Now with this payment, it might be partial or full. Now, given that there are 300 of you, I think it will be a fair idea to go like, hey, instead of paying the $100 for just 15 people, it might be reasonable to at least $50 so that you can take care of the other $50. Or if you think you can pay the application fee and you don't need it anymore, and you are part of the top students, you can let us know and we can just move someone from the um, just beneath to take that position. Having said that, if you are a top student and you are not able to complete your application within the two week window, I think we are just gonna cancel your position because it might show lack of interest. And someone with a second class upper might equally come take your position and the person will just come and then go like, hey, I think um, I'm ready. We check, if the person has it, then we just give the person that, that chance. So that's how it's gonna work. So be mindful of your position, be mindful that it might aspire, it depends on your interest as well. Others are waiting for that opportunities as well. Yeah, so in terms of the categorization, I thought I was gonna um, finish um, compiling the list. I think I'm still receiving more applications as of this morning. So you can go to my webpage. This is where I'm gonna put all the information. Um, when you go to my webpage, you tend to see, I have my volunteering guide here can get to see this, the general guide, which I discussed with you guys. With regards to the slide today, I'll put them here when time permits. I'll give you the general application um, consideration that you have to make based on our discussion. I'll post the video as well. Then we finally look at the application um, stages. I think we we looked at it today, but just by way of um, further reiterating what we did today, I'll post it here as well. Then I'll give you guys in terms of the program classification where you fall. So when you come to this page, you tend to see an Excel file. You can access, access the Excel file and get to see which category you fall in. Then you can get back to us. If you think that's not a fair category, we can change you. But again, just be mindful that your rank might change as well. So that's how it's going to work. Again, we have 300. We are trying as much as possible to, I'm trying as much as possible to allocate 1,500. It might be the first five getting the hundred and then the rest getting a partial $50 um, application um, application subsidy in that regard. So that'll be the end of it. Um, I think um, I'm ready to take questions. If you have any questions, please um, draw my attention. Um, I'll be glad to um, answer them. I think a lot of them came in the chat. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think I see Gombilla. So Martin, please feel free. Um, all those who have their hands raised, please feel free to do that. Feel free to use the mic. Um, if you already typed and you think okay. I didn't answer your question, please feel free to use the mic. I might not be able to read the questions one after the other. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. So let me just go one after the other. I think um, let's go with um, Martin first. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So I'm um, Farouk. Good evening. Um, 
Uh, please, do you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. So I have already applied to the University of Calgary. Mm. And um, I'm done with the application fee. I'm mm. done paying the application fee. Mm. Now, they have been given a student's portal through um, um, which I monitor all my activities. My references have um, my references have filled their form. They filled everything and submitted. But then, you know, I'm supposed to submit an official um, transcript and um, certificate. Yeah. And um, in the requirements that I read earlier, I was told that I could do that online or oh, the school, my institution can send it through email. And so I went to the University of Ghana and they sent, they sent it on the third last, last week. But to date, it's still on the to-do list. I don't know if I'm supposed to do it because when you, when I go onto Stand Portal, it's kind of like I should go use a sealed envelope and everything. Yeah. And it still hasn't reflected that I've, I've submitted my um, official transcript and um, certificate. So I don't know, I'm confused because according to the University of Ghana, they've submitted it through email to mm -hmm. the um, email address they provided. Okay, so, so let me finish. Yeah, let me give you a quick um, update as to how this might work. So um, I, I think I do sympathize with you over there in terms of the... Um, in terms of the requirement, so he said Calgary. I do have a colleague there. I probably might want to do a quick check with him. With him, however, I will with the go. official transcript, you have to go to. Hello? Is there someone using the yeah. mic there? Sorry, I probably have to mute you guys. Oh, Frank, please don't do that. How can the last time no, there is. I think um there is um. Yeah, so um, just a quick one. Um, back to your question, Martin. I think with the official transcript, what I know... Please, the man talking should please mute his mic, at least. Yeah, so what I know for sure is um, if they are asking for official transcripts, I think you should go to Invest of Ghana get the hard copies, get them sealed. There is, there is a stamp that will be, will be done at the back of the envelope, okay? At the back of the envelope, they will stamp it. Then you take it to a post office and post it. That will be considered an, as an official sealed transcript. That's how it works. With the email, I think you are just repeating the same process that you did earlier when they asked you to upload your file. So if Investor of Ghana is telling you that uh, we, sent, we sent your soft copy, I don't think that's enough. I think you should go to... Uh, yeah, but, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Martin. Yeah, yeah so per the inscriptions, the, mm. per, per the um, inscriptions that were given me, mm. um, so I, I, was, I went to the page mm. and I was told, they, they, they in fact defined to me what an official document is. Mm. And... In, in it, they also said um, official email transcripts need to be sent by the transcript office of the institution that you attended. The name of the transcript office may vary. And so they also provided for me um, an official email. And so they said email transcripts must be sent directly from the issuing institution's transcript office to, then they provided the email address for me. So that email address was given to the university, but in, in, just for just for assurance sake, I think it should be better I go there, get the hard copies, and then, um, as you yeah. just said, um, yeah. do it. Because I thought I was doing it. In, uh, yeah, sure. With a soft copy. That works out. Uh, Martin, you know what we do, we're going to do here? I'm going to connect you to, um, I think um, there might be Dennis there, who might be, Kali, uh, be of help. Um, yeah, I'll connect you with Dennis. Let's connect online and um, hopefully he might call you help as well. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, Larry, um, do you mind um, coming in with your question? Yeah. Salam alaikum. Yeah. Salam. <coughs> uh, I have two questions basically for you. I hope you can hear me. Sure. Sure. So, my first question is that I'm in the process of applying to the University of Saskatchewan, mm -hmm. but uh, I attended Islamic University and Islamic University is affiliated with University of Ghana. So 
in the list of schools that pops up in the application process, I do not find the name of Islamic University there, but then I find the University of Ghana. Will I be mistaken to, uh, to select University of Ghana as the school chain attendant? Yeah, I think that was a tough question. I think I wouldn't be in a position to, um, to answer, but again, I can connect you to either Latif or Faith Okran. Maybe and, she uh, might... Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm not cutting you off. The problem is that I sent mm -hmm. them a message asking this question. But mm -hmm. you know, some of these schools have these automatic replies that yeah, so, just direct you. Uh, they just direct you back to the requirements. Yeah, and so it doesn't that's, really answer your question. Yeah, so that's what I'm trying to say here. So here, instead of okay. relying on the email, I'm trying, to, I'm okay. trying to give you a personal contact where you can quickly have a look at... Um, where the person can just go to the department and ask on your behalf. So that's what I'm trying to see here. So we can connect offline, whether be it Latif or Fit, maybe he can um, quickly check for you. Yeah, I think um, okay. with, right. that's, that's a tough question. My, all right. My second question is, uh, I'm, I'm exploring another institution in, I, in the United States. Mm. And uh, the, they are demanding this LSAT uh, mm. test result. I've tried to connect with them whether that one. Yeah, I think you're kind of cutting off. But again, with the, with the U.S. schools, I think um, I'm not really conversant with them. But that's why I pretty much, I mean, narrow everything down to um, Canada for, for, for the start. Okay. Maybe when there's a colleague in the, in the States that knows much about it, I think he, he can help. Uh, maybe Salim, or we can connect with um, Shafiq. Shafiq can connect you with, with um, Salim. Maybe he can equally help in that regard. Yeah. So let me go to the next person. Um, who, who is, is there someone with the name Zoom Zoom um Zoom user? Hi, if, I think I'm the one. I actually okay. named this so uh, Okay, go ahead. Um good good afternoon. I don't know the time there, but good afternoon, Dr. Dr. Farouk. Mm, yeah, good afternoon. Um, please, my name is Ilham Mohammed. I've mm. been recommended to the program by Abdul Razak, Yusuf Bawa. Okay. Yeah. yeah Razak. Um please, I have to, yeah, I have two questions. So my first question is that um, I'm applying to these three schools in Canada, um, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and then Memorial University. Hmm. Yeah. So I, ha I, have, um, I had my first degree in economics major with computer science, and then second degree in development finance hmm. from the same school. Right now, I want to apply for another master's in economics. So I want to know if I stand a higher chance of getting admission because of the fact that I already have a master's and I'm going in for another master's. Even yeah. though um, my first degree, I didn't really do so well because I didn't get a first class, but the second degree, like, I mean, I did massive do well, so I want to know the chances I stand. Yeah, I think um, yeah, you for sure do stand a chance. Um, I think it all depends on what you think um, you probably might have lacked during the the cause of your undergrad or probably the cause of your master's that you, you think Saskatoon Memorial or the other school do offer. So you, it's, it's all about how you kind of um, write your statement of interest. An example here is you go like, even though I'm, in, um, I'm done with econ undergrad, I'm done with my master's, these were the questions that I wanted to ask during my master's program. These are my thesis. But I think there is a much more relevant, there's a, there's a more relevant question to address rather than the one that I address. Or based off my understanding of my initial thesis that I have, I think this is the next question I would like to ask. And based on the departmental strength, like the likes of this professor who is working on this, the likes of that professor who is working on that, I think um, coming here to um, do my master's or a second master's related to this particular problem that I identified with them might be a viable option. So the course that they are offering suits me. I think you should have a look at my application based on that. It's all about how you tend to, um, I mean, so- So, um, yeah. sorry, sorry to cut in, but sure. yeah. the thing is that I actually, um, I'm actually pursuing a career at the Ministry of Finance in mm -hmm. Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, so I was, I was, Actually, I'm um, tailoring my um, SOP towards that end. I mean, the reason why I actually want to do this MA in economics is because I want to specialize in macroeconomics. And I intend working in a specific department within the ministry, mm -hmm. which is the economic and research department. Sure. Yeah. So in it, I was just, I mean, I spoke more about like what I'm doing now within the ministry and what I seek to aspire. 
and that is why I really want to get this ME. I mean, yeah. ME program in economics. I don't yeah. know if that is okay. I think it does. It's just the same. It's just the same idea, but flipped in the other way. So in the, I said you identify a different problem, but you are trying to say you identify a different department that needs a different skill. So that's yeah. how you might want to just go sell about. Yeah, go write it. Yeah, I think that's oh, that's, okay. that's equally good. Yeah. Okay, and please with the funding issue. Yeah. If, for instance, I'm giving um, probably half scholarship or half funding, should I see, yeah. or probably not giving funding at all, but giving an admission mm -hmm. to the school, yeah. and I don't have, I mean, money to fulfill the bills or the tuition. So can I come to, I mean, Canada and then try to work and then pay my fees or something? Would they give also, me that chance? Or it depends. It depends. So if you have, I mean, if you have absolutely nothing, right? Um, it's first of all, you you the first major obstacle you might be you might be faced with is a visa application because you need to show that hey, you have enough funds to come to Canada. So if you have absolutely nothing and you don't have any bank statement to show that hey, this person is willing okay. to sponsor my application, then um, I think it's 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 a, it's a dead start from the end. Now the um, if you have a partial payment or if yeah, if you have a partial payment. And then I'll encourage you to um, explore. I think um, most people come he in here with partial payment, but they end up after a semester or two, um, pretty much relaxed. You know, it's, it's, it's not as if they'll go like, hey, you've not paid your fees, leave. No, they don't do that here. They're very gentle with, with, with a fee payment. And they have, oh, okay. as I pointed out earlier, ways, ways and means of, I mean, I mean helping students. So um, there should be a fair balance there. And I should point out that if you are worried about funding or how to survive, the first thing is housing. If you have a very affordable housing um, in terms of the rent, I think the concern is a bit um, alleviated in some in some way. So if housing is okay, if you don't have if you have a very moderate place to live and you are paying like four hundred dollars a month for housing, I think that's a good start. If you are not too much in terms of food maybe 150 dollar max in terms of your food that's another way of looking at your budget then have a fair budget okay i'm going to spend 800 dollars every month 800 dollars how much is that maybe somewhere around 24 um 22,400 cities is this something that i can reasonable ma reasonably manage i think it's something that you can do you can equally call on friends here they can equally help maybe hey why me something? The person will why you when you start working, you can equally pay back. I think we have a very general student society student system here, and they can, they are more willing to help. So if you have partial funding, I would encourage you to um, throw it. I would encourage you to explore. I mean, come, Canada is very receptive. So okay. I would just move on to um, Farid Gombela. Thank you. Sure, you're welcome. Um, Farid, if if you if you want to use the mic, please go ahead. Hi, um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can, yeah. Okay, um, thank you very much. Um, so um, I also did my Bachelor of Arts degree in political science and philosophy, and I have a second degree in uh, an MSc degree in violence, conflicts, and development from SOAS University of London. Mm -hmm. And I want to further studies in, in, in you know, political science. And on that, um, in your categorization, you didn't mention a contact for the at one who you are going to connect us with to have some um, further information in terms of those of us from the political sciences and psychology, um, you know, fields. Last, last year, I tried applying to Canada and I didn't get in, so, um, but fortunately, I ended up going to the UK instead. But my other question too is, um, in terms of the um the the research statements i think it's I, I don't know maybe that would be discussed at a more um at the sub yeah. sub you know field level because i think sometimes the research statements is one thing that um trips a lot of us what how much to cover in the research statement what to highlight and you know how to go about it because sometimes you get some requirements they say they want a one page research plan yeah. and i i feel like that's you know that becomes difficult to know what to put in and what to leave out and same goes for the sop sometimes with the statements of purpose or the personal statement you want to talk a lot or you want to emphasize on your personal circumstance um especially with what you described like for example in my case i didn't start so well um for my first two years in legon but 
my last two years, I ended up getting a strong second class upper. But how do you explain all of that within a one page or two page research, you know, um, sorry, statement of purpose? So, yeah, basically, these are the things. And one more thing um, with the immigration, hmm. you said when you do a two year program, you're allowed to stay for up to three years. Yeah. But what about a program running for, for say, 16 months or 18 months? Three Would years. that still extend to three years. two years? Uh, three, three years. Okay. Three. Right. Yeah. So, anything above one. So, even so, um, if you are lucky and you do one year program, you might get a three years. But that's uh, that's rare. But if you have one year or one and a half years, then you you are most most um, often than not guaranteed a three year stay. Okay. Yeah. Anything above one year, you get three year stay. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then the, um, with the with the first question as to um, who might lead your session, I think I do have um, a couple of. Um, Guys, we have Fauzia, we have um, Dennis Dugar, who is here in terms, um, he's doing um, political science as well, just about to graduate um, with his PhD. Um, I've contacted Dennis. I know Fauzia is also willing to help. So I think you guys might be in a good shape. He might um, assist in that regard. And um, with a statement of interest and purpose, um, I think um, maybe when you guys go into the session, they might equally help. Yeah, the research plan as sure. well. Sure. It yeah, might help you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Sure, you're welcome. If there are any other questions, um, please feel free. I think um, I'm more. Yeah, I think there's Razak, there's Fridaus, there is um, Aban. If I unmuted you and you're willing to talk, please go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, Brother Faru. Sure. Um, please, I posted a question asking about um, if you are if you graduated, let's say three years ago, mm -hmm. and so you have a GRE score, probably also three years. Uh, do you stand a chance when you apply? Um, yeah, I wouldn't be in a position to say that um, you stand or you don't. But what I would like to mention here is I know the GRE has a lifespan, right? I think it's a five-year lifespan. Or I don't know um, for sure. Maybe you might want to have a look at that. But the general feeling here is if you have two competing students, one just finished school and one has been away for some time without anything related to that field to show for, then um, the fairly recent student is pretty much sharp. He knows his, his tools very well and he, he stands a higher chance of getting in. Uh, th this, is, this might be the general feeling and I, 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 I might be wrong on that. If you have a three year um, gap and you have experience that are pretty much related to your work for that three years, I don't think that's, that sh that sh that, um, you stand as, as a disadvantage point. I don't think so. So it depends on what you were doing during um, those three years, where there's something related. Another idea that I would like to point out here is if, for instance, you did political science, right? Pure political science. You've been out for three years. You were working something related to political science, but not so, uh, something related to political science in some, in some way. What you might want to do here is think about um, changing the, the, the course. So when you want to go do pure political science for masters again, that might be too much of an ask because it will ask you to do a couple of theoretical stuff and the three year gap might um, be a disadvantage for you. But if you venture into maybe public policy and you are going to public policy, you're coming in as a political science student, maybe three years ago, but you had some experience related to public work during those three years stay, then you are a good, you are a good candidate. You're not really theoretical. You're not competing with really theoretical people you you had something that was solid on theory in your in your undergrad you have experience to show for it and you stand at, at par with other applicants in that in that area i don't know whether that makes sense okay thank you uh, but another question yeah sure go ahead is that um when you apply you keep in contact with let's say the graduate coordinator of the program, program you apply to yeah would it be uh, like you are bombarding them so, with so much questions or something? Oh, no. So I, I just... Yeah. I think, first of all, get the confirmation from your email. If you get a confirmation that your application, the application has been submitted, 
I don't necessarily think that you should be sending um, incessant mails. I think what you should do here is get to know when the application deadline is supposed to be. Um, if you know the application deadline, I think that should be that should be that should be um, that should be fine. Maybe one email in between, but not more than one. And if you know the deadline, a few weeks after the deadline, maybe one email should be fine. If you're not getting any feedback, then call on um, individuals in the department to assist you with quick check. But sending too much emails might just um, might just annoy them. It might, it might not. But again, that's my personal feeling. Thank you very much. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, I think I have Maruf. Was there? Hey, assalamu alaikum. Assalam. Hey, Maruf, Mohammed, how are you? <laughs> Good, Dr. Farouk. Alhamdulillah, I haven't had the opportunity to send my congratulatory message to you. So I think I'll do it in public now. Congratulations, both. <laughs> Thank you. Alhamdulillah, you've made us proud. Yeah, yeah I really don't have a question. No problem. Mine <laughs> is a commendation. I would like to commend you guys for organizing such an impactful program. Mm. I guess if some of us have had this opportunity, some of, some of us wouldn't have struggled the way we did. I believe Dr. Farouk can relate to what I'm saying. Mm. Inshallah, that's very good. It's very good to give back to, to the Ummah. And I hope Allah will strengthen all of you, the organizers, to give back more. Inshallah, in the nearest future, when we are also in the opportunity to give back, I hope you would also join the train sure. and also share our experience with our brothers. Sure. So sure. that's what we sure. have for you guys. Oh, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Islam. Thank you. Yeah, so Maruf is a colleague of mine back in uh, back in the university. Um, just a quick one as well. You probably might have heard a uh, lot of salam alaikum and mashallah. So this program is not it's not only um I mean channel to uh, Muslims, it's, it's it's open to all. So just make sure um, you apply, okay, regardless of the number of salams and yeah, so feel free. Um Emmanuel is there, yeah, is there yeah, Emmanuel, go ahead. Hello. Uh, hello. Yeah, Emmanuel, go ahead. Uh, Sorry. Thank you very much for the opportunity, please. Sure, you're welcome. Uh, please, I've applied to, I've, I've, I'm also, I don't know, I'm applying to the University of Calgary mm. and then uh, for biomedical engineering. Mm. I've already written to uh, two professors, but I've not had any uh, feedback from them. Yeah. Uh, so I was in your discussion, you mentioned the friend who is in Calgary. Yeah. You mentioned that you have a friend in Calgary. I don't know whether you can uh, link me to him so that maybe he can help me with questions that I have for him as well. That's a good question. Um, so with, with those engineering related, yeah, go ahead. You have a second question. Go ahead. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. uh, last yeah, I had two uh, admissions from the uh, some universities in the states, hmm. uh, but I didn't get any uh, funding, so I had to uh, defer one of them and then one of them. Hmm. And then with the financial uh, verification form, it's like the all the people I contacted to, I mean, uh, give me their bank statement. Yeah. I don't know, but some of them, most of them were thinking <laughs> it's like once they give you their bank statement, like automatically the school is going to take fees or something from them. I don't know, how do you correct set, uh, such a misconception? Yeah, so I think that's a good one. So but coming back to your first question, so the colleague I had in um, in Calgary, I think he's in the economics department. Um, his name is Dr. Um, Dennis in Safwa. He just completed. Yes. Um, the reference that I'm talking about is pretty much related to the department. So if, for instance, you are doing biomedical engineering and I would like to refer you, it would be ideal for me to get someone in that, in that, um, in that department for the person to do a follow-up. That being said, okay. um, I think when I break you guys into your respective rooms, like the sciences, I think you guys, you, you guys do have a lot of problems contacting supervisors. So Professor Solomon will be in a position to guide you guys first, get to see how to um, write your emails. Then if there's any other follow-up, I think uh, maybe I might, I might um, see whether Dennis knows someone in the biomedical I mean, sciences, if he can be of help. Um, the second thing about the bank statement is, I don't know how the Canadian, how, how the US schools work in terms of the um, requirement, 
but for the Canadian schools, you you basically just need to represent a bank um, statement. Nothing about wiring, nothing about, it's just the person's six months um, transaction. And that's the end of it. Nobody takes any, any money away from, away from the state um, statement. So um, I think you should start looking at people that might be of help, maybe uncles, maybe aunties. And one, sorry, one thing I forgot to mention, not only do you have the opportunity to, pre to present a bank statement, you also have the opportunity to present, to present other related um, documents with regards to your assets. Maybe there is, there is a car that your dad has, you can attach that. There is a land value that's a certain amount of money, you can attach that. There's a business registration form, you can attach that. Attach as many documents as possible related to one's financial standing and present it. That's what I would encourage you guys to do, not only the bank statement. Okay, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, so let me see, um, there is Said Fridos, go ahead and uh, maybe you go to Fred after that. Okay. okay, so good evening, everyone. And thank you, Dr. Faru, for this wonderful opportunity. Um, my question has to do with the application assistance program. Mm -hmm. um, I am currently a graduating student yet to graduate and get my certificates in January. And I don't know if the deadline for this application program is going to affect that because I've not been able to apply since I don't have my certificate. So I want to know if there are any arrangements or if um, the time I'll get my certificate is not really going to affect this application process. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that's a good question. So if you are in your final year and you want to um, start the, um, the program, which starts in September next year, 2022, you can present your final transcript as part of the application process and tell them that, hey, I'm still within the... Um, I'm still, uh, what's the name? I'm still within school. I should be able to complete everything by March and present you guys the doc. Some schools do allow that. That being said, you probably might want to ask yourself the question as to whether you like to uh, perform the national service, which, um, which is required by many. If you are not in a position to um, perform a national service, then you can go ahead and do what I asked you to. Just check whether they, are, they accept um, incomplete transcript, which I think many schools do. Do that, and then um, when your transcript is complete, you can tell you can you can go ahead and uh, let them know. And we can come in and verify that hey, they do accept incomplete transcript, and I can I mean execute the payment if you are selected. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Sure. Um, Fred Quart Fred Quartin. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Right. Okay, thank you so much for the opportunity. But I also sure. completed in 2018 mm. and I read economics from UCC. Mm. I want to apply to Kagura and Manitoba. Mm. But then um, they are requesting about three references. Mm. So I want to know if all the references should be um, academic, as uh, professors who taught you, I can attach um, a professional reference because um, I did research, I did research assistantship. After school, and I'm now venturing into business journalism. So I want to know okay. if all my references should be from the academic side, or I can assert a professional reference to it. Yeah, you can. Um, you can do that. I think some of them will ask maybe two academic references and one professional one, and some of them are pretty much silent about it. Um, the reason why you stand at at, at um, an advantageous position when you go with three um, academic references is whatever they write in there is easily understood by those reading um, those doc, right? So if, for instance, you're going to do economics and you have a professor who is also in the field of micro writing something related about you, about you and your strength in micro, then the committee will be more willing to accept you compared to someone writing something about you as to how, for instance, you, you prepare an Excel file, which is not related to economics. They might not necessarily buy that. Right, so that's the reason why getting to um, getting three three referees, strong ones from the academic side, is quite advantageous compared to I mean professional ones. So that would be my my first take on that. But if you think the professional um, referee is someone you know very well, who knows your empirical skills, how you can easily apply your I mean economics training on several problems that you've worked with him on. 
why not just try and talk to him you guys can strategize pick up the projects that you worked on see which projects you applied what skills on and he can also i mean narrow it down and write something pretty much i mean solid in that regard so it depends on how you play it out okay thank you so much yeah, sure okay so i guess um yeah yeah hello yeah go ahead hello yeah go ahead najat yeah okay so good evening yeah go ahead yeah good um, evening my question has got to do with a program of choice hmm. and um, what um the category or i don't know how to say but so the program of choice is maybe master of public policy and then you go into to see their requirements and you see that there's something which says the tuition is specialty. But other, with other courses, there's regular, like you keep seeing regular, regular. Yeah. So first of all, I want to know the difference between the specialty and the regular courses. Yeah. That's my first. And what's the second one here? Yeah. Yes, it's so related to that. So if we are taking the, speci the course that says is specialty, do you stand a chance of gaining admission? Because I've applied before at Saskatchewan, and then I think I didn't take notice of those things, but I think it was part of the reason I didn't get the admission or something like that. So I wanted to know the difference, and do you advise for a person with just bachelor's degree to apply for such programs? Because I keep, I've also heard comments somewhere that it's not advisable to take such courses, maybe you rather want to transition to such courses. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. I want to know the difference first, yeah. Yeah, I think with the um, with the special programs that you, you mentioned, um, some of them are pretty much designed for professionals. So again, you might wanna check the requirements, you might wanna check the fees as you pointed out and other um, nitty gritties. With public policy, MBA, um, business courses, these are, I mean, courses even in terms of the fees can tell you that they are not meant for the for 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 any um undergrad coming in for 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 need of um, a scholarship or for a need of uh, just a transition from undergrad to masters so um i think the general feeling here is with the special programs if they are able to i mean if they they go to the length of telling you that hey the fees are are not as standard compared to others, that should be a red flag for, you, for for most of us. And I see that most with the M MBA programs. And I think what you just mentioned might be um, an option. Even, you are, even if you are to get in, they might not be in a position to give you the scholarship because the special program, it's not, it's not meant to, um, it's not meant to attract students. It's some people, it's especially meant for some people. So they are coming in and they are willing to pay the school will not be in a position to probably give you the money to come in. So I think these are a couple of considerations that we probably want to want to do. But there are other programs that might be very, very flexible, quite general and very flexible. I know there is urban planning, for instance, at SFU, pretty much flexible. You might have only take a look. I know there's gender studies at SFU, pretty much unflexible. We, yeah, so these are these are programs that you guys might want to see. But if you see a program that says that hey, the fees are even different, then that should be a red flag. Um, let me see. Yeah, sure. If there are any questions, please um shoot it. I think we. Yeah. Are, Hello. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So my name is Mary, and then I completed from KUST. Sure. And then I have a few questions to so, ask. Hmm. Um. First is. Uh, related to um, being able to get in touch with a professor mm. that would be willing to assist you in your area of um, your area you're interested in, mostly because of the emails, lots of emails that they get. Sometimes you email them and then um, they don't reply. Yeah. So um, I wanted to find out in in the process of email a professor mm -hmm. to be your supervisor yeah um how should you go about it probably maybe uh, the format or how we present the issue makes it uh, puts us in a wrong position for them to um, get back 
up to us. So yeah. I wanted to get a little advice on how it should be done. That's a, that's a very and good then, question. And yeah. uh, second, yeah. Go ahead. also, yeah. yeah, I wanted to also find out, mostly in some applications, mm -hmm. they are asking you about um, your motivation or some of the things you've done or have you won awards or this kind of thing. So if you don't have any, how do you um, present yourself or, or put your, sell your story across in order to be able to stand, have a better position um, with that program? Yeah. Of steady. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, which 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 um which 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 program are you in? If I may ask, just so I get to. I study materials engineering. So that would be a good option for you to join the science team. So I think um Professor Solomon has been saying this a lot to me, and he's willing to um guide you guys as to how to write the emails and get you guys um. I mean, a bit more up to date as to how to do that. So hopefully when I break you guys into the respective um, um, sessions, um, Professor Solomon will, will surely um, do that. I tried doing a couple of, uh, couple of time for, my, for myself and my, um, my sister. I know how it looks like, but again, Solomon might be the best person to um, rely on. So I'll try as much as possible to uh, get the session started. And um, hopefully you guys might get to see how it works. Yeah. Um, the second one as to whether you you've won awards and how to sell your story. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one if you don't have any award to show to show for. But again, you don't want to go and um, impress if you don't have any. So I wouldn't encourage you guys to say something you don't have. That's something that will be deemed um, a bit misleading. But selling a story, I think you know yourself very well. I think everyone has a story to, I mean, to, to, to say. Sit down, have a look at your, your, I mean, have a look at your journey so far. And there is something that might, um, might capture someone's um, attention. Um, I don't have much to say about that. Mine, mine has been the fact that I've been able to pick up myself from a very low point to a very high point. And I need people to see me as someone who's more motivated and someone who is more willing to do that. Maybe my, yours might be, hey, someone, a female doing material science, which is a bit unusual in a West African country, but you're able to do that and finish with a good class. That's a story you can sell, right? So these are things that you can play around with. And again, Solomon might be in a position to assist as well. I don't know whether I've answered your question. Mary? Yes, Hello. thank you. Sure. Yeah, I think we are just about time. I, I probably might have to, um, yeah, so I think, yeah, yeah, so I'll just take two more questions and hopefully I'll post the video online, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah Dr. Paul, um, yeah. once again, thanks for this opportunity. Yeah. Then um, my first question has to do with if one has um, an MSc in financial engineering mm -hmm. and what category is he going to be placed? That's my oh, first yeah. question. But that's a good question, yeah. Mm -hmm. good. And the second, and, uh, second question is, let's say um, I personally study BSc human biology mm -hmm. in UCC, mm -hmm. then I later studied MSc financial engineering with Wellquant University in, in the USA, but it was actually online. Hmm. And then I'm um, thinking of pursuing a related course program in financial engineering in let's say in Canada. Hmm. But then because I don't have um, let's say it's all that we're told that if we wanted, if we 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 want any any uh, reference, we can ask for reference, but Ever since we completed, it's been difficult um, to get someone to give you a reference because you know we have not had face to face with the lectures. Always has been online. Mm. So in that situation, how would I be able? How would I stand the chance of getting um, an admission without having a strong reference for my um, MSc program that is financial engineering? 
And um, again, let me get a, let me get this straight. So, are you applying to an MA program again, or are you up? Are you applying to a master's program, or do you want to move MFS, from the MA? Yeah, oh, I okay. want to. Um, yeah, further to also apply for a master's program. Yeah, in a related program that is in financial engineering. Yeah, so I think um, yeah, that's a that's a that's a tough question because this is this is a fairly um, it's quite. It's new to, to most of us, this online and how the reference might might play out. And I don't know how the universities might want to look at it. But given that you are not uh, moving from the current MSc program that you, you have to a PhD, but rather you are moving from that program to another master's program, I don't think calling on your former referees, that is to say those who have something related to your Biology, um, biology or biological courses will be a bad idea. I think you can still call on them, tell them that this is the program that you are applying to. Maybe they might give a more general reference in terms of who you are, what you perform in those um, courses, but they might not necessarily capture your financial capability in terms of analyzing the financial um, aspect. But you can mention that to them as well. What you can equally leverage on is if you took courses related to math, and you, yeah, courses related to math in your biology or bi biological science program, then you might want to call on those um, referees the, the more because what you're going to do here is something related to the financial market, but the foundation is in math. So if they are to give you a reference that shows your math capability, then it shows that you can survive the financial um, course, so, which makes it much easier. So that's how to play out. Yeah. Okay, the first question that is with the category. Yeah. Yeah, with the category, I think you might um sh yeah, that's a that's a tough one. If you don't find yourself in any if you don't find yourself in the uh, the first category which I believe might be the business, please let me know. I think I might probably have placed you in the uh, yeah, in and the because the first one. yeah. Okay, because I believe the financial engineering um, relates to economics too, as well yeah. as let's say the computer sciences, best yes, programming sir. and all of that. So that is why I wanted to be sure as to sure. which category I'll be placed under. Yeah. Sure, sure. I think um feel free to connect. I'll be I'll be willing to um have a look at the okay. category again. So I think we have MFR, then um we have MG MGL. Thank you. Yeah, then that'll be right. I think so. Yeah. MFR and MGL. If you guys are there, please feel free. Hello, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Yeah. yeah, it's MFA. Um, I have I read statistics mm. uh, at UG, mm. and then currently I am doing a film because by the time I applied, I didn't get a chance to get scholarships, so I proceeded to continue at UG. But I still have plans of doing a degree in Canada. So I want to find out if you have any recommended schools because you're looking at my, my field, maybe we have some schools in Canada that's with a higher acceptance rate that when I apply, I could get it easily. Also, I want to find out if it's the GRE is recommended and you don't have it, it means it's, it's, it's not required, it's recommended. Do you stand ahead of getting it i think that's my question oh these are these are good questions so with um yeah so mfa i think your your first degree was statistics and computer science if i'm right um the masters i i'm sorry i didn't capture that the masters which yeah, the masters m field statistics yeah m field statistics and you want to pursue yes, what is it is it is it a phd program or you want another uh, master's program uh, if I get a chance to pursue, I want to go into data science. Hmm. So if I get a chance to maybe take a one-year MSc to prepare hmm. me for doctorate, that's fine. Okay. But if I get the chance to go straight into PhD data science too, it's fine. So I want to know the schools that hmm. um, I can, because I don't want to apply for any school that yeah. maybe the acceptance rate is low cool. and they don't really take people for data science. So... I want to know any schools you can recommend yeah. respect to the field I want to go to to get a higher chance of being selected with funding. And also to know if the, the GRA is recommended. 
are not required, can you still apply without a GRE? Or it yeah. was compulsory that as a master, I have to take the GRE course before. Yeah, so the schools I have in mind might be um, Investor of Mind too, but the Statistics Department. I know Faisal is there. I know um, there are quite a few of your colleagues there as well. Um, there is, um, um, yeah, there is Faisal. There is, um, I think I know four of, four, of, four of our students there. I think that's, that would be a good start. I know Saskatchewan also has a good um, statistics program and you might stand a higher chance of getting in. Um, that being said, I probably might want to think more and ask more questions. Um, I mean, get in touch with Faisal and see whether he might be willing to um, lead a session related to statistics. Because I see a lot of you guys coming from statistics and natural science. He might be in a position to better yeah. answer that question. For GRE, I know um, GRE is good to have, but if it is not required and it's recommended and I don't know whether you, if you have the money and time, then you can give it a try. If you don't have the money and time and you have a very good standing, just like your case, as well as a very good um, the, uh, master's degree, and you have individuals within the same department that I just mentioned who, who went there and did very well, then they wouldn't suspect your degree. The reason why they, they mostly ask for GRE and GMAT is they don't know the quality of your degree. But if we have colleagues coming in and doing well, and you tell them that, hey, I'm coming from Ghana, this program was recommended to me by this colleague of mine who is in your department. And um, due to financial reasons, I cannot write the GRE, but these are my grades and, and the performance of my colleague can attest to the quality of my school. I think I think you should be fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank sure. you so much. Welcome. Let me come. Yeah. Um, I think the last person will be MGL, then we call it a quit for today. And thanks for those who yeah, came in. Yeah. Okay. MGL, go ahead. Yeah. So I hope you can hear me. I can. Yeah, my name is Brent Sapia. Okay. Um so um I did publishing studies from mm -hmm. KNUST. Okay. Um and I've been practicing as a professional journalist for the past eight years. Mm. And so um, the programs I want to apply with, apply for, I'm looking at um, something related to communication, media journalism, um, that area, public policy, that area. Uh, first question is about the categorization. I didn't see where the program of mine will fall in the categorization. And I wanted to find out whether, because I realized that most of the programs that get a lot of scholarships and all that are the sciences. Yeah. So I wanted to find out if um, my area of studies uh, will also attract uh, some source of funding, funding that will make um, education easy. And perhaps with my long stay in professional work gives me a good chance of getting in after my first degree. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. So with um, the pu with publishing, publishing um, I think in engineering, I don't know much about it. So again, I might not be in a position to probably give it a very good category. As of now, I think I probably might want to place it in the other fields, but feel free to, I mean, I mean, I mean, educate me on what, what it does and um, how it can be, I mean, easily transferable to other programs. So uh, please, that's, that will be up to you. And based on that, I'll just place you in the, um, in the segment that might be more suitable based on your explanation. So that'll be the first part. And again, I do acknowledge that I'm a bit more, I'm, I'm a bit ignorant on, on, on the, on the uh, specifications of the program. So that being said, I might not be in a position to probably give more emphasis as to which programs you might wanna look at and what might be your chances. The other part will be the fact that you mentioned that you've been out for almost eight years or so. Now that that's quite a long time, right? And 
I don't think it's a disadvantage if you have something to show for it and you've been able to show that you are some, you are in the engineer, I'm sorry, I think um, journalism and what's not. I think what you can, you can start thinking about is how you transition from, from, from that, right? How you transition from maybe publishing engineering if we are not able to find a course. Publishing that, studies. Publishing, publishing studies. studies, sorry, publishing yes. studies. If you're not able to find something that's, I, th I think there should be something related. I think, I think try education or library studies. I think there is something like that. Oh, is it, is it, is it, am, am I wrong? Yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of related. Um, basically in our program, the publishing study, we did um, a lot of things. Um, library studies, of course, we did a bit of media. Hmm. Uh, we did a bit of book publishing. We did a bit of um, um, well, like publishing as well. Journalism, a bit of it. So. That is why I, and we did a bit of um, entrepreneurship as well. So that's why I entered into journalism as a, a profession and sure. I've been doing that for quite a while. Uh, I think, um, yeah, I think um, with this answer, I think um, I, I do have a fair idea as to where you might want to have a look at. I think um, there is an education program here at Simon Fraser University. Have a look at it. There's also library studies. I think have a look at it, but we might have more time to um, sink more when, when, you have, um, when you have the time. So just just have this um these programs in mind. When there's more time, I think I can talk to you and then see how best we can narrow it down. All right, thank you. Sure, sure. Oh uh, yeah. So that's just about it. I think um I've answered almost everyone's questions um, here. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Sorry, I have a um, I've, I've asked a question earlier, but I have two quick questions, please. Yeah. Um, this is Farid. Okay, so first of all, someone who did accounting at the bachelor's level and wants to switch to public relations, um, what are the chances of getting into such a program? And secondly, um, there is this belief that the kind of program, especially for immigration purposes, for people who want to stay on in Canada to work. There is this belief that the kind of program you do sort of influences what job opportunities you get after your studies. How true is this? And would you advise that someone with such an, in, um, an intention, would you avoid certain programs and instead go for others? I don't know if you get my question. Yeah, yeah, it depends on your. So first of all, the, the first question you asked, I think, um, transition from accounting to another program it depends on your strength on on accounting if your accounting was very good and your grades were, were were very solid then i think you stand a chance and again with with the program you are trying to transition in you have to really ask yourself the tough questions um how how difficult is this program how competitive is um is the program in the first place if it's not that competitive and you think you your accounting i mean i mean your accounting degree is very solid I think you stand, you stand a very good chance of getting it. So that would be the first point. So and, and these are questions probably, it might be quite um, idiosyncratic, just related to you, and you might be in a position to better um, address them. The second part is um, coming to Canada and working, um, and which program to choose. I think Canada is very, very vast. That's the first thing. I think career opportunities are here. It depends on what you do with it. You might finish with um, economics. Someone might finish with philosophy. If you are not aggressive in looking for your career-related jobs, you end up stuck. So that would be something that I think might be related to the individual in question as well. So if you are coming to um, Canada, you have something that you really want to do but because of the difficulty in the application process, you stretched and you came, you, you now have a new program that you are doing. Our advice, go ahead and do it. If you're done and you think you have time, the immigration policy is very flexible. You can apply for a PR, which, which implies that you can be in Canada forever. And with that peace of mind, you can quickly go back to the program that you wanted to do earlier and get it done. You can either do it whilst working or they just do it as a student from, from start. So it, it, it all depends on the individual, I might say, regardless of the program. The program does not, does not determine your success. 
you are the one who determines your success at the end of the day because more flexible here you have the time to make those decisions after you come in okay thank you very much sure, sure. thank you sure. So that will be it for today. Again, thank you very much for coming. Hopefully, I'll post this uh, video on the, um, yeah, if I have it, I'll post it on the webpage and uh, we continue with the discussion based on the categorization. Talk to you guys later. Bye. 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 Bye.